Алло, слышно? Да, я тоже, к сожалению, сегодня там через полчаса начнется занятие, где я должен быть. Так что самое, я послушаю начало, а потом завтра дослушаю запись. Добрый вечер. Добрый вечер. А в следующий раз мы с Казачинским могли бы рассказать про неравенство имени Ромащенко и его следствия. Ага, давайте. Комбинаторное. Угу. Но если, если сегодня ты успеешь кончить... Да, я думаю, что я кончу. Или все разойдутся. Ты там где находишься? У тебя какие-то посторонние разговоры? Я нахожусь в университете имени Саши Куликова на Кипре. А. И, вот, собственно, должен им рассказывать самое, про случайность через полчаса. Ну, как-то они тоже по понедельникам поставили, да? Нет, нет, это я приехал на, там, на полторы недели, и это разные мероприятия в понедельник, так что в следующий понедельник я уже надеюсь быть обратно в Монтелье. Зато студенты, здешние студент, один из них, объяснил мне, почему это самое, некоторая наша с казачинским гипотеза оказалась неправильной в таком самом сильном виде, так что от этого есть польза. А из какой области гипотеза? Гипотеза очень простая про игру, что вот мы, мы а, порождаем комбинаторные прямоугольники, то есть противник порождает комбинаторные прямоугольники, и, а, и есть два параметра К и Л. Противник порождает комбинаторные прямоугольники размером а, всего К Л штук, не пересекающиеся. А в ответ мы должны классифицировать эти треугольники на горизонтальные и вертикальные. И наша задача состоит в том, чтобы каждая вертикальная прямая пересекала не более К вертикальных прямоугольников, а каждая горизонтальная прямая не более L горизонтальных прямоугольников. Это возможно делать офлайн, то есть если все прямоугольники даны сразу, то несложно найти такую, такую, такую раскраску их горизонтальной и вертикальной. Но вот как мне объяснили, то самое, а с, с, онлайн это невозможно, но для Калмогоровской сложности, для утверждения про Калмогоровскую сложность, неравенство Ерещагина, фу, не Ерещагина, а Романченко, оно эквивалентно не этому, а тому, что э, э, там это самое, число пересечений не больше К на некоторый полином. В общем, вот это я все могу объяснить в следующий раз. Но никакого комбинаторного доказательства неизвестно. Хотя, наверное, оно должно быть, ну, так сказать, странно было бы, если бы. Но нету этого самого Илона Ньюмана или ноги Алона, которые бы это разъяснили. Да, нету. Сейчас я надеюсь, что теперь-то ссылка правильная была. 
А я хожу всегда по одной и той же ссылке. И ну, даже уже да, перестал правильно. смотреть на... Это правильно. Ну, я по ссылке из рассылки зашел. Да. Так что, видимо, правильно. Да. Нет, то, что я, например, поздно пришел, это не, не ссылка виновата. Да, я что... это самое обещал, что мы в следующий раз что-нибудь расскажем про неравенство и комбинаторную задачу. А пока мне здесь студенты на Кипре объяснили, что э, просто в точности КЛ достигнуть невозможно. И очень просто объяснили, а, а, а это, ну, это я напишу. Ну это для чего? Для К равно 3 или равно 3, небось? Нет, 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 в общем виде, совершенно в общем виде. То есть множитель типа n появляется. А, ну ладно. А может мы все равно по-английски будем, даже если никто не придет, там, что могут люди потом посмотреть запись, захотеть? А в прошлый раз было по-английски. Ну, давайте, let's switch to English. But, but last time there, it was in English. So right. then, yeah. then it, it makes sense. Yeah, otherwise it would be rather strange. Uh, okay, so I will now present the main theorem of Zahara and, and whom? Who is it? Let's see. Shekhovtsov. Shekhovtsov Zakhar. Who is here, actually? So, but he didn't want to show, to, to switch the camera, but he's ah, here. Ah, really? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we can uh, uh, send our tributes to him. So, so he he's probably listening. Let's hope. Yes, I am listening. <laughs> okay, so Shekhovtsov uh, Zakharov in a clean form, so to say, clean form. Probably not the cleanest one, but at least cleaner than the original version. So in this form, there is uh, uh, they uh, claim some reduction from infinite uh, to finite set. So we will use the following notation: a e of s is a priori probability that uh, of a set s that is the probability that the universal machine uh, will enumerate exactly s, not more, not less, and c e is the complexity of enumerating of S. This is, the uh, this is not the probability, this is the minimal length of the program that enumerates our set again with respect to universal machine. Now the theorem then looks like that. Uh, assume that any set is given and let's assume that for all finite sets, subsets, so F is finite. Uh, who uh, have large um, a priori probability that is the, the probability given k and l, k and l will, will be some parameters, integer parameters, is at least 2 to the minus k over some constant. Yeah, there, there is... Uh... You wrote f below a subset of s, which makes no sense just for any finite f. No, wait. As the first quantifier is for over for every finite f, which is subset of s. Uh, for every finite subset of s. That's what I mean. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have that uh, complexity of enumeration of that set is small, less than L. So we have two parameters. The first parameters, uh, parameter two to the minus K is a lower bound for um, a priori complexity of enumeration. The second one is the upper bound 
for the complexity uh, of that set. So that means that there is a gap uh, between uh, in enumeration, uh, between a priori complexity and um, uh, a priori probability and complexity, then more or less the same gap holds also for S. That is, if uh, a, uh, a priori probability of S is large, is at least 2 to the minus k, then uh, its complexity is at most L. Uh, so if something is, is true for every finite subset of S, something in the sense that uh, Mm, uh, the complexity is bounded by some function of uh, a priori probability, then more or less the same bound holds for S itself. So that's their theory. Sasha, does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. And now I understand what you mean. But what is strange for me that you have complexity given condition scale L in the, in, the, in the condition, but don't have K and L as a, as a condition in, 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 in the result. Uh, it, it, it's, it's... That's important because when we add some condition, then the complexity becomes larger, uh, the probability becomes larger, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so it's, 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 re it's not, it's intentional, yeah, okay. It's intentional, of course. So uh, for finite sets, we need uh, a little bit, uh, 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 a little bit a stronger statement about relation of uh, complexity and probability. Uh, but it's only, uh, little... it's only. Yeah, uh... Sasha, what what are you saying? Um, I wanted to ask. The, the what is the quantifier of the constant? There is In one. The, the constant doesn't depend on anything. It depends only on two universal machines from the definition. No, I mean the statement that there exists such constant. Such there that exists, all this yes, there, there is a constant. Such constant that for every f and every s and every k and every l, if this. Tra -ta -ta, then tra -ta -ta. Mm -hmm. I understood it like this at least. Right, exactly. There is a constant, there is a constant C with the following yeah. property. Exactly. You can just add the quantifiers for K, L, S, and uh, ah, and for all K, L, and uh, K and L and uh, S, right? And S. Right. Uh -huh. For all no, no, for all for all K, L, and S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it comes here. This quantifier. Yeah. And then. The quantifier for all f is in, in the condition. So it is it's in condition. That's so important. It's, it's essentially, the, uh, so, 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 so we have actually two conditions: some condition about finite sets, and also the condition. That this condition, this is the one condition. Uh, this is the second condition. We have two condition conditions, uh, and one consequences of these conditions. This is a consequence. So actually, we will prove uh, this um, implication in, uh, in the following form. We will assume that uh, probability is large, and then we will prove that either the complexity is small or the second condition is false. That is, there is a finite set whose a priori probability is large, and the complexity is also large. Uh, so uh, how uh, we will prove this thing? So instead of, we will uh, actually design a special uh, machine, M, M 
will be a probabilistic uh, enumerating machine. With the inputs, K and L, with the following property, instead of this uh, assumption that uh, uh, a priori uh, probability is large, we will use that the probability with respect to M is large. So we will use this. Uh, is large in the sense that it is at least two to the minus K over four, something like that. So this will be actually our assumption instead of, of this. But we need M to be universal, yes? Uh, no, we don't need, because th this make it even stronger. Ah, yeah, 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 it's a double, double condition, yeah. So, uh, so actually our task is just to construct such a machine uh, given, uh, given nothing, gi given a universal machine enumerating a priori uh, probability and also given another universal, universal machine, which, um, uh, for complexity. And uh, I, I already explained explain that here it is very instructive to use cats and dance metaphor. So uh, we will consider the graph consisting of all finite subsets uh, of naturals like that. And where the ages are inclusion. If you draw something, we don't see it. Uh, sorry, I, I'm drawing. This is one, two subset, this is two, three, and so on. This is a directed graph. Uh, and uh, so mm, mm, consider first this guy. Uh, the complexity of enumeration of a set of sets. Uh, so what does it mean? We have some universal machine U that has an input, a program. We will consider only to prove when we prove the theorem inputs of a length at most L. L is our parameter. And uh, such a machine enumerates such a, uh, a set given uh, any P. And uh, we will uh, call such P's uh, just cats. So P is a cat. And uh, then, for example, then at the very beginning, when P, uh, uh, we just run U on all possible cats, on all possible P. Uh, and at the very beginning, uh, all the cats enumerate, enumerate nothing, the empty set. So in the beginning, all the cats sit in the root. Once a cat, say, uh, prints certain number five, we will uh, visualize this as the cat moves along the edge to, to five. Then if uh, after that it enumerates two, then the cat moves to, to five and so on. So every cat walks uh, along this uh, graph uh, uh, time to time, uh, from time to time, it it makes a move uh, upwards, uh, and this movement of cats uh, is given by uh, by the machine U, and the way we enumerate we run this machine on all possible inputs of length at most L. These are cats. Now, what are ants? We have another machine, universal V, which is a probabilistic machine, which can be viewed as a machine that receives an infinite zero one sequence as input, a random one. And such sequence will be called, uh, called 
denoted by omega and call, called ans. So omega is a noun. And again, for any fixed uh, omega, omega, it starts with the empty set, then it prints something, for example, one, then it pr prints three, and so on. And we will again visualize it that that and first is in the root, then it moves upward to the um, node one, then it moves to the node one, three, and so on. And again, we will run V on all possible finite prefixes, uh, uh, finite uh, uh, strings without uh, any bound of the length. And so that means that uh, when we visualize that on, on the graph, we will see that time to time, a certain portion of ANS uh, moves upward. For example, it might happen that one eighth of ANS ANS enumerate five, then uh, among them, say, say one sixteenth enumerates uh, uh, additional, additionally two, and so on. So ANS also walk along this tree, uh, along this graph. At, ev at every moment, uh, there are a finite number of portions of ANS. All the remaining, uh, uh, the ants are divided into a finite number of portions. Each portion uh, is a fraction of two to the minus k for some, two to the minus m for some m, and sits in a certain node. Well, it's a bit uncomfortable to think about continuum of ants. Maybe it's, it's an, another uh, visualization is that you have ants which just can divide into smaller ants when necessary, when the, the, they go in different different uh, directions, they, they just split. Each keeping... portion can be split, for example, in four or eight pa uh, parts, and some of the parts uh, and parts mo can move in different directions, right? This is... May, 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 may be easy to understand. Uh, Sasha Kazachinsky, is it clear? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, you can. I, I mean, I, I'm. Uh, I see what's happening, but is it a part? I mean, just a general question. It's a part of the dis description of M, like some is no, initial. No, 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 no. It's it's not a part of description of M. It's part of description of C and A E. So a enumeration of the a priori complexity is visualized as uh, ANTS movement and uh, complexity of enumeration is visualized as a CATS movement. Uh, and yet there is, uh, there, uh, there is no machine M. So now how we can visualize M? So M is the machine to be constructed. It will be constructed also in terms of movement of ants, and we will call call them slow ants to distinguish between fast ants. So fast ants, uh, the movement of fast ants uh, is not up to us. Uh, they move uh, how they want, and slow ants are moved by us. So we, we move slow arms, that means that we just define the probabilistic machine M. Uh, and now I will explain how slow arms are moved. And so I will ex explain how M works. Uh, this machine uh, we are constructing. Uh, Uh, first of all, uh, we will uh, make one-to-one -one correspondence between slow ant and slow arms and fast ants. So every slow ant is an infinite sequence of zero and ones, and every uh, fast ants uh, is also a, an infinite sequence. So if this is the same sequence, we will call, say, uh, two copies of ants, a slow ant and uh, 
uh, fast art or two clones of the same art. Uh, slow uh, uh, copy, a slow clone and fast clone. Or we can just say that at <laughs> any time, each ant has two positions, slow position and uh, fast position. And this and position... splitting of the slow out ants are just the same as the fast ants. Right, exactly. Uh, and uh, there we will keep, we will move slow ants so that at any time of the movement, every slow ant is below the corresponding fast ants. So if this, say, is a slow ant, and this is a fast ant, then always the fast ant is above the slow ant. They may uh, be in the same position, but this position is, uh, 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 the red position, the slow position is always uh, low, uh, under the green position. And now I will explain more exactly how they move. And the rule is, the following one. So first of all, we make uh, 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 we make uh, movements of uh, uh, cats and uh, fast ants. So after each movement of a cat or a fast ant, we make the following thing. The first one, uh, the first thing we do. If, uh, and also every slow ant may have, may be in two uh, conditions, uh, in two states. Either it is free or frozen. So let's write it, free or frozen. At the beginning, all they are free. Uh, If, uh, first of all, we look for a node where there are uh, frozen ants and a cat, if there is such node, then so, so to say that cat makes all these ants free, so they are unfrozen. This is the first thing we do. And this is done uh, for every node. At any time of our simulation, there are a finite number of nodes where the ant can sit and also cat can sit. And for each node where there are frozen ants and the cat, ants become unfrozen. So they, beca they become free. And the second type of movement, mm. Uh, the second uh, the second action we do if there is a finite uh, uh, a, a node in the graph so that below there are at least uh, two to the minus k over four slow ants and above and their uh, copies are above that node call it f the node uh, and these are fast, the corresponding fast arms. So their copies are above. Then uh, all these slow arms gather, move to that node. Slow, slow arms gather, gather in F, in F, uh, and become frozen. And in the first, uh, and this is done in a greedy way. For each node, we uh, we just look for any such node, do do that gather thing, and then we see if there is another node with the same property. And those slow ants should be free. I forgot to say, slow free ants. Uh, and I also forgot to say that in the first. Uh, action. I mean, in the first item, when 
some uh, ants become frozen, unfrozen, they they catch up with their uh, with their uh, uh, fast clones. So they are unfrozen and, so to say, they scatter. Scattering means that each ant of those uh, slow. Uh, so we, we have here some portion of uh, uh, frozen ants. And then all they move upwards to catch up with their green positions. So this was a uh, uh, position of red, uh, uh, slow ant. So this is the first type of movements. So when uh, slow ants become unfrozen by a cat, so they become free, then they immediately catch up with their uh, fast uh, clones. And the second one, they gather, so they were here below F, and they they move to F and become frozen. So uh, this uh, is uh, this is uh, uh, the um, the definition of the movement of the flow arms. So. In other words, this is the definition of a probabilistic machine M. And for that machine, we will uh, prove what we want. Uh, what is our goal? Uh, so is it clear, I mean, the definition of M? Uh, well, OK, so um, in the second uh, type of movements, in scattering, mean below, below F, it means you mean just on the uh, preceding, just exactly on the preceding layer, or it can be any finite subset of F. any any uh, at any distance, even in F. Some of them can sit in F. Some of them much below F. Doesn't matter. Uh, what's important that they have they can move to F because uh, ants can be move only upwards. And they can move. Yeah. Uh, we need that they can move to F. They may move to F. And what you see, it. They huh? But we. Uh, what, what do you mean? We we are not necessarily, uh, but we are controlling slow ants, no? Yes, right. So and slow say... ants move to F. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, what's important? We control them, but we can't move. Uh, we we are allowed to move any slow ants only from a set to its superset because it's enumeration. Yes. Uh, yes. That that that's what I meant. So we move from a set to its superset. That's important. And also, you see that we keep our invariant. Each slow ant is below its fast. Because fast ants are above F and slow ants are below F. If we move them to F, still all, all these frozen slow ants are below their fast clones, right? Yeah. So in gather when they gather, they keep uh, the inv invariant. And also when they scatter, they all also keep the invariant because they catch up with their uh, uh, fast copies. And now, what do we have to prove? I'm sorry, may I ask questions about right. this? Uh, at first, I don't understand what uh, 2 to the power minus k divided by 4 means. Uh, it's a fraction of slow ants. It's a fraction. Uh -huh. We of have all, one of unit of all, of all active slow ants. Uh, uh, all, uh, uh, what do you mean by active? Any slow ants is either free or frozen. 
uh, I mean here the fraction of all ants. So we have one unit of ants. Okay. And two to the minus k over four is some unit, uh, okay. uh, some fraction. And all those ants must be free and below yes. there. Uh, next question. Uh, if we have several f uh, satisfying this condition, what uh, should we do? Uh, as I understand, you you are trying to explain uh, a behavior of uh, machine, right? Uh, but machines should do something uh, in each moment of time. And now I don't understand uh, if we have several f's, uh, potentially infinitely many. Oh no, 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 only no, no, for finitely many, yeah. Uh, but uh, se several uh, are possible. And the next question related with this. Uh, Machine uh, makes an enumeration, as I understand. So right. when it produces the next number, uh, several f, uh, several sets should be updated. And uh, how to control all these things uh, in your uh, funny story about cats and dance, uh, and now slow and uh, fast dance, and what fast dance uh, sh should do? Uh, they uh, oh. go... Uh... Misha, Misha, too many oh, questions. So yeah, yeah, this but, is but very... I, I understand nothing. So questions are... Uh, so, nice, yeah. uh, uh, let's start with the first... What is your first question? Yeah, my, my first question should be... Uh, what machine should do if we have uh, two... Several Fs. Several Fs, yeah. Uh, choose any, for example, the next first F. And okay. move item two. Then, if there is another F, such then choose again the next first and do for that and so on uh, until mm -hmm, mm -hmm, until mm -hmm. there are no such f's so this is the mm -hmm. answer for the first question mm -hmm, but in mm -hmm. particular the first type of uh, uh so you, you, when you unfroze you also well for, for example if you can see that you can unfroze some ants you you also do that right in in no, uh, no, somewhat. it's enough to do first one, uh, uh, action one, and then action two. And if uh, after action two, we again have some unfrozen, actually it can't happen. that uh, uh, The action two can't create uh, frozen ants with a cat. Because all, all, all the ants... Actually, it can. So uh, we will unfreeze them on the next step. So we we we, we make first one and then two, and then uh, sorry, sorry. and then let uh, uh, cats and fast ants move. That's our uh, algorithm. So one, once again, whatever you can do an action uh, an action of the first type or an, act, or an action of the second type, you do that no. in some order? No, not... we make first all the actions of the first type, then we do all the actions of the second time, and that's it. It's easy to okay. understand this in this way. So first, first, uh, first, first, then second. So, Misha, what is the, your second question? Mm. My second question is about fast ants. Okay. Uh, fast ants are, are moving not by us. We enumerate, uh, we, we run the universal probabilistic machine on all <laughs> possible inputs. Uh, in some, how you would say, dovetailing way. Uh, and once uh, it outputs a new number on some input, we just move the corresponding portion of fast ends, and that's it. So fast ends uh, describe a behavior of some universal machine uh, which is not specific to S. No, it's not specific to S. It's uh -huh, some fixed uh -huh. universal machine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what is a uh, uh, rule of Mm, moving cats and dance. Uh, uh, cats are uh, cats are also not un uh, under uh, our control. A cat, a cat is just a program of Lenkert's most L. 
if a certain program enumerates a new number, we just move the corresponding cat upwards, and that's it. But we, we, should, we, we, we should uh, run uh, all these machines in some order. So, Not machines. Uh, you... we, uh, machine is fixed. This is you. We run you on piece in some order. You are right. And we do it in a dovetailing style. That means for any T, for any P, at some time we need to make T steps of U on P. Uh, and the order doesn't matter. In some order, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the order is uh, insignificant and actually uh, mm, this machine runs uh, in parallel with machine M, mm -hmm. and machine M uh, 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 reacts on, on, on the events uh, while running uh, this machine U. And V, and V. And, and V, and V, yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So, so, so we, uh, we, we, uh, more or less, we do the following thing. So run U uh, and V, Make a new step of either U and V, then mm -hmm. make one, and then make two. And and this is a cycle, a loop, an infinite loop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Zero, see. one, okay. two, zero, one, two, and so on. So okay. the, 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 this uh, is called uh, uh, scatter and free. And this will uh, uh, call this shift uh, will be called gather. So scattering mm -hmm. uh, is done after unfreezing, and uh, after each gathering, there is a freezing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So now, what we want to prove in these terms? In these terms, we have to prove the following thing. So assume assume uh, that uh, uh, the enumeration. Maybe you it. should change a page if you right, wrote. Right. right. Uh, assume that uh, that enumer uh, uh, a priori probability of a certain set is large, at least two to the minus k. That means that there is a portion of fast ends. All of them go um, go uh, along S, so to say. They 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 may they enumerate S. They can move along different paths. For example, they start here. Then, but in the limit, they enumerate the same set S. They can move. One of them can move this way, another one can move this way, and so on. But in the limit, all these two to the minus k fraction of ones of fast ones enumerate two to the minus k fast ones enumerate as. Then this in should imply that either there's a cat enumerating S. So some some cat goes also along in the limit it enumerates S. So maybe using a quite different path to move, but in the limit it enumerates S. Or there is a finite subset of S with a phone property that uh, the probability that uh, uh, the probability with respect to our machine of enumerating. Uh, so act actually, uh, our machine uh, has K and Del as inputs. Because to make all these movements, we need to know both K and L. So uh, uh, we have to use the conditional uh, probability. So the enumerative 
the uh, probability of enumeration of f given k and l is at most two to the minus k over four, uh, which means that um, uh, two to the minus k minus two slow ans sit each f and stop there forever, right? And stay there. Yeah, they, they they are in f forever. Sit in f. They uh, at some time they move to f and sit there forever. Mm -hmm. uh, and simultaneously, there is no cat in f. So that means that the uh, uh, the complexity of f is less uh, larger than l. So no cat. In F, I mean in the limit. Uh, each cat either do doesn't reach F or it uh, reaches F and then goes further. So that's what we want to to prove. So assuming uh -huh. assuming that uh, uh, many ants enumerate F. We need to prove that either some cat enumerate s, or for some finite subset, uh, some portion of slow ants sit in there forever, or uh, and simultaneously uh, there is no cat in there. Okay, Misha. Do I understand why it's enough to prove this? Uh, really not. Uh, I confused with this conditional uh, probability. In your picture, I see no conditions. In your picture, we found skates and slow, frozen. Uh, the algorithm to move slow ants has two inputs, K and L. Because in, in the in their definition of their movement, I use both K and L. Let's see. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. So that mm -hmm. means that actually we are talking about conditional probabilities. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Now, how we will prove this? So consider any slow n. So it has time to time it changes his state. Either it is frozen or it is free. And it comes from free state to frozen state when it, they gather and back when they scatter. When they scatter, each uh, slow ants catches up with his, uh, is it's uh, fast copy. I don't see. W w w I I see both states are written as free. Oh, I see two words. Uh, One of them. What is frozen, what when is they free. gather, they become frozen. Actually, here should be free. Sorry. This is free, and this is frozen. So this is frozen, and this is free. So from a free say, state, they uh, come to frozen state. They gather in a certain uh, f, uh, node f, and become frozen. And then some cat comes in that, uh, probably some, some cat comes in that node, and they become free and scatter. Right. Uh, uh, just so when when there is a cat and there are frozen and but there has to be two to the minus k over four of them, right? In some ah wait or I'm confused. Ah, that is, that's when they gather, right? When, when they become frozen, then there is a, always a portion of two to the minus k over four of them. So they fr freeze in large blobs, so to say. 
sorry uh, so if we have three um um uh, three slow ions and the fraction of them is at least two to the minus co k over four and they can all come up to the same node with uh, uh, and it's in it, it, and it is possible to maintain the invariant then they do that and they become frozen but if a cat comes there then this two to the minus k over four frozen ants uh, go uh, possibly to different nodes but uh, to 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 the each of them to the their matching uh, fast ant right that's basically it is. yes so when they are frozen it is a large portion of them and this large portion becomes free mm -hmm. and each of them uh goes to its fast uh, copy and then if we take any uh particular ant uh, i mean slow ant then they go in this cycle and there are actually three possibilities obviously either it makes infinite number of cycles Mm -hmm. or it uh, at some time it's free from some time it's free <clears throat> so it stays in free states forever so free forever or frozen forever in the limit in the right. limit so yeah. starting so from Either starting from some time it becomes frozen, or starting from some time it becomes free, or it makes infinite number of these cycles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now consider only those ants which enumerate uh, S. There are two to the minus k of them. Call them good, say. So we are given two to the minus k, large portion of good ants, those who enumerate us. And just focus on, on the good ants. What are they doing? Uh, we will prove the following thing. Uh, first of all, we will prove that it's impossible uh, that all good ants become free in the limit. This is impossible. Our algorithm somehow prohibits it. So this is impossible for a good aunt. Let's cross it out. But, ah, you mean uh, good ants, I mean, there are total minus k fast ants, but you consider they are clone, they are slow clones, uh, uh, and they Yeah, are... yeah. I, I, uh, I mean two to the minus k good ants, but here I consider they are slow copies, right? So this we will prove that this is impossible. Uh, we will prove that in the first case, when some ant uh, makes some good ant makes infinite number of cycles, then uh, this holds. And if uh, 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 the first alternative holds, and if uh, some good ants is frozen from forever at some times, then this alternative holds. Ah, so and, is, uh, sorry, and once again, no good, no good slow ant can be free in the limit, right? That's the, also yeah. the claim, right? All right. So every good ant uh, makes either infinite number of cycles, uh -huh. Or it's frozen in the limit. Uh, no, I'm sorry. If there is an infinite uh, good ants, is if there is a good ants that makes at least one of them makes infinite number of cycles, then the first option holds. If there is at least one uh, uh, good aunt that it's frozen in the limit, then the section or se second option holds. And we will prove that there is impossible that all three 
ants or all good ants make uh, uh, are free f at some from some moment. So we we will prove that it's impossible for all good ants this second uh, option holds. Ah, okay, so, yeah. So if there is uh, an infinite uh, an ant with infinite number of cycles in these holes, if there is an ant which is frozen from some time, then this option holds. And it, it is impossible that all good ants are free from some time. So, Misha, is it clear, the plan? Yes. Um... To some degree, <laughs> understanding. <clears throat> okay, let's try. Uh, excuse to me, once again, which ants are good? Uh, those who enumerate us. Oh, okay, thanks. So let's see. Let's prove first the, this implication. This one. Assume that some ant. A good ant has infinite number of cycles like that. So it mm -hmm. uh, it makes a gathering shift and a scattering shift and so on, infinite number of times. Uh, so when it uh, comes from frozen to free state, then there is a cat here. And some cat must free that ant infinitely uh, number of times, right? That slow ant. Yes. So that cult should enumerate us be be because uh, uh, our ant infinitely number, infinite number of times uh, catches with, this, with, with its uh, fast copy. And its fast copy numerates S. So uh, in the tree, it will look like that. So our slow ant goes to its uh, position of its green copy. Then again, it moves to position of its green copy and so on. And this is done infinitely number of times. Uh -huh. So here, then here, and so on. And each time it makes uh, such a move, there is a cat which unfreezes him, him, makes it free. And so some cat must have the same movement. And uh, I mean, it may, it may, uh, may use different paths. So uh, let's uh, assume the cat are um, a blue. Some cat is first here, then somehow it gets here, then it gets here, and so on. And that cat, which infinitely, no, infinite number of times uh, frees, I mean, it, 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 it unfreezes our uh, ant, slow ant, it must enumerate as. Misha, that's one yes, key. yes, the, the, this is clear. Oh, this is clear, okay. Uh, now let's prove this direction. So if there is uh, an ant which is frozen forever, so it is frozen forever, it means that it sits in some not air, started from some moment. And of course, it is not alone. We freeze only a portion of ants. So uh, uh, there is a portion of two to the minus k over four ants that are here and frozen forever. Uh, okay, and that means that those slow ants sit here forever and they are not unfrozen. So there is no cat that comes here. So we, we have that for this finite set, 
the enumeration complexity is larger than L, uh, and the probability with respect to our machine is at least two to the minus k over four. Why the second? So once... Why probability is uh, large, uh, as you said? Uh, uh, what is our rule? Uh, 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 consider the time when this ant was frozen. At that time, we have gathered here a large portion of uh, slow ants, and we freeze all of them. Ah, yeah. I see. Uh, to freeze of them, uh, we need a cat who come comes from, here from at the below. Point. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see. And no cat comes here because yeah. we know that yeah. they are frozen forever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they are frozen mm -hmm. forever. Okay, so we have these two implications, and I miss an explanation why um, a good aunt cannot be free forever. No, we need to prove why it can't be that all good ants are free forever. Mm -hmm. The last oh. thing we need to prove is this. It's impossible. that all all good ants all good sons uh, end up in a free state in mm -hmm. a free state in the free state mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah That's when they are waiting to gather, but uh, are not able to do that. So well, we'll that... never find the possibility to gather. First of all, if they amount uh, ants in a free state, then it, uh, it is there in that mode when it is now forever. Because mm -hmm. we move an ant only when they gather and become frozen. So each ant reaches its final position at some time, each good ant. So this, this is the position, final position of the first ant. It ends up here in a free state, another one here, and so on. First, I claim that uh, uh, call Sn the first n elements of uh, 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 S. If there are no n elements, so just all of them. I claim that one half of good sounds, there is n such that uh, fa uh, at least half, more than half of good ants are below SN. So this is SN, our uh, uh, our node called SN, and I claim that at least uh, half of good ants, that is 2 to the minus k, k over 2, are below Sn forever. Is it clear why? Well, every good ant is below some Sn. Right. right. For every good ant, there is certain n such that it is below Sn, right? So, I mean, like, the by continuity of probability, like the measure of ants covered by Sn should converge to one, right? And then uh, you say not okay, to then... one to two to the minus k. To yeah, to two to the minus k. I mean yeah, uh, and this means that for some n, already half of this two to the minus k is covered. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so these ants, half of good ants, uh, are below SN forever. Okay, good. Then consider their fast clones of those ants. Fast clones enumerate as. So each fast clone at some moment is above SN. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we know that Mm. Mm. starting from some mm, uh, time each uh, of these uh, uh, ants is in the free state so the second claim it, it is there is T such that starting from T moment T <laughs> Uh, there is at least two to the minus k over four half of these ants, which are above SN. Fast ants, fast, good. Uh, let's let's call these ants we we uh, which are in the limit below SN very good ants. Call them very good ants. So we, we, we have two to the minus k over two very good ones. And I claim that uh, there is a t starting that from moment t at least uh, uh, mm, half of uh, good, uh, very good fast ones. First of all, they are above us. Um, And their clones are below us and, and uh, in the free uh, states. In the free states, very good ants are above as mm -hmm. in uh, and their clones and their slow clones are free. And that's again by continuity, because for every good, uh, uh, very good uh, ant, there is some moment here uh, when its uh, fast copy is already above SN, because it enumerates S, so it's starting from some moments, it's, it's above SN. And also, we know that it is in a free state starting from some moment. So for each uh, moment, there is, for each very good arm, there is some T. And uh, when T increases, these sets of very good arms cover all very good arms. So uh, by continuity of measure, there is certain T where half of very good arms uh, this T is common for those uh, very good towns, right? Misha? Uh, yes, uh, it seems So, and, and look, what do we see at that moment T? We see a portion of 2 to the minus K over 4 ounce, such that their fast copy Copy, copy is above SN, slow copy is below SN, and there are many of them. So how it happened, that it, why the, how, uh, they haven't gathered in SN? They should be gathered in SN. Because when we, uh, in the, this, uh, when we consider this as F our SN, we will see that it, uh, qualifies for gathering there all these two to the minus k over four rounds, right? They are in the well, I, I, so it's a contradiction. I, yes, yeah, it's a contradiction. Okay. Well, I don't understand one moment. So uh, we were saying that if we have different f's to do, 
this operation, we do them in, I don't know, in the lexicographic order in, in right. some order. Right. Why we cannot have this SN in our queue to do that forever? Like, just because there will always be some other Fs. Uh, so, uh, Sasha, at, be... at, at every moment, we look through all Fs. There are only finite number of them. So okay. we, we, we consider all Fs. And then at some moment, we also consider this F. So what do we see? We see that there are many ants below. Their copies are above. And so we should gather all those slow copies. Sasha means that your rule for um, uh, processing a different uh, F uh, should be modified. Uh, why? To I don't that, see uh, why. Some said, uh, you, you say you look uh, at the list in the lexicographic order. Right. But it, it means that some said, uh, if you proceed some set, it can produce many other sets um, uh, which are less than in the lexicographic order than this, say, SN. And it, it might prevent to... Um, uh, prevents that uh, these ants will uh, gather. Well, I guess uh, the no, answer, Sasha. Uh, Sasha, we, uh, at any at any uh, time when we make this uh, this thing to what what is called to uh, where is our two? Ah, this one. We look through all the um, Fs in some order, doesn't mean in which one. So our F, call it F1, F2, and so on. Assume that our, uh, our F is F9. Then we have some movement for F1, F2, and so on. Finally, we come to F9, and we see that it qualifies for gathering. So we move, we 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 we, we must uh, gather in F five in F nine. Uh, but all previous Fs are also uh, ready for gathering. Okay, so so we make the gathering, for example, for this, for this, and so on. Then we yes. see F F nine. And but, after this gathering, uh, it is possible that some new sets will. Uh, be inserted in the list. I understand, but then we put them into to do to do list after F nine. Ah, I see. So so Kola means it uh, from the beginning, but I understand uh, his rule uh, in different way. Yeah, if yeah. you insert also, new, new sets in, in the end of the query, we have no problem. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I guess what also can happen is that, for example, I put F nine to the to do list. But then when I arrive to process F9, it already, it, it doesn't, um, this condition doesn't call for for this F9, but no, it's no, fine. Uh, because, uh, uh, Sasha, how it argued that uh, the condition uh, is, uh, holds forever. It holds forever at any step. Starting from some moment of time, of course. Yeah, starting wait, wait, wait. from what? Some, wait. some moment, whatever we do, the condition holds for uh, our FK. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm just uh, clarifying the algorithm. I I understand that you uh, you 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 have to say that in this specific case that we are applying our algorithm, uh, we know that F K will always satisfy the condition, and when we will finally consider it, there will be a contradiction. But I'm just right. saying that in the algorithm, uh, we might uh, well, it would be better to clarify that when it is possible that when we consider one, uh, some of these uh, nodes in the queue that we have, it might be that they already violate this condition, doesn't have this can, this property no longer. No longer have this property, right? Sasha, the property uh, for our set is true for every time. Whatever we do, it is true for our set, starting from some... For which more. set? Uh, uh, SN. 
Yeah, right. yeah. I just said that it. I agree that it's true for SN. I was just trying to say that I have a correct understanding that in general in the algorithm, not necessarily for this SN, but for other Fs that arise in the algorithm, it might be that when we are considering them, uh, they no longer satisfy this condition. That okay. That were true when we when we have put them into the queue. But I agree that it doesn't hold for our specific SN, so there is no uh, mistake in the proof. Sure. Okay. I but I don't now understand and don't remember when when we use and for what what's the role of the first type of the when we how it's called scatter the ants. Or uh, wait, not gather, oh. right? Sc uh, sc so scatter. They are first free, then they gather, and then they scatter. Scattering is important in the first implication. After each ah, scattering, because... each each slow uh, slow guy. Uh, catches up with its fast version. So this is scattering. Ah, uh, to uh, put uh, some cat and into if, the... if, if not, then the cat that unfreezes it uh, uh, could not enumerate as because this uh, uh, we need to have the property that this uh, slow ant, or slow ant, also enumerates as if there are infinitely many cycles. Uh -huh. If there are infinitely many cycles, then slow ant for that ant, then that slow ant enumerates the same set as its fast copy, and this. Uh, to this end, we need to scatter. So, Sasha, okay? Is it okay? Yeah. And so the, the... No. Yeah, 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 I think the, the proof is, is is clear, yeah. Okay. Uh then I can explain now the second thing. So uh so that means that if we have for finance set uh the some uh bound that uh if uh, enumerating uh, a priori probability is at least two to the minus k, then uh, complexity of enumeration is at most two k, say plus order log k. Then we have this implies the same implication for infinite sets. With, uh, with different const constant in order log k, but the same constant with k. All right? Th th this is uh, Zaharov Shekhovtsov. There has to be mm -hmm. s on the right, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in the, the second line, s, yeah? Uh -huh. mm. And so I now I can explain why we have two here. So actually, they proved this implicate. They just just have to prove this. They have proved this, uh, and uh, I realized that actually they have this implication. So let let's prove uh, this. Oh, why for finite set we have two constant two. This will be theorem now to prove this one.
Misha, is it clear what, what I want to prove now? Uh, the, the first theorem here, right? I, I want to prove theorem one. Okay, I see. So proof of theorem one. Let, let, let's move to the next slide. Uh, again, I will use cat and dance metaphor, but now uh, we will move cats. So ants are moved not by us, I, uh, and we move only cats. How they are moved? Uh, so we will have about two to the two k cat, cats, uh, and they are um, each cat at any time controls our portion of two to the minus uh, two to the minus k ants. Controls, so to say, or call it epsilon. Uh, what does it mean, controls? It just virtually it takes a certain poor epsilon portion of ones and say, I will control it. And uh, the rule is that if a cat controls certain ant, it is below that ant. So cat controls the all these ants, and it must be below all these ants. So that means that it can move there to any and... ants. The sets of controlled ants uh, are intersecting, yeah? May intersect, right. May, may intersect, yeah, may yeah. May intersect. May. Uh, and Actually, it should intersect with these values of parameters. Sure, because there are too many cats, right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is the first invariant. And the second invariant will be the following one. Cats are uh, uh, are arranged into levels, so there are, will be two to the minus k levels, so one over epsilon levels. Uh, on one level, it is exactly one over epsilon cats here. Here and the second level one less. Here again one less, and so on, until we come to the first level. So <clears throat> these are controlled sets of ones. These circles. So each cat, each cat is represented by a circle. More precisely, the ants it controls are represented uh, by a circle. But, but circles should intersect in this case. Uh, they intersect, uh, of course. Uh, but uh, we will keep that on the same level. So these are disjoint. These are disjoint and so on. On the same level, they are disjoint. On different level, they can intersect. So this might intersect. This, for example, and this may have common ants, but this can't. So this can't intersect, but this can intersect. So on the above level, each uh, we have one of epsilon ants, and each, uh, uh, and they are. Uh, pair, so we have one over, over epsilon uh, portions of ants, each is epsilon. So they must, they are disjoint and they must cover every all ants on, on the above level. And on the second level, uh, some epsilon 
uh, portion of ones keep unattended by the cats of the second level and so on. This is the second invariant we will keep. Misha, is it clear? Both invariants. Why you can uh, achieve the second invariant? You take uh, controlled sets such that uh, on the first level, such that uh, uh, they cover uh, at least one half. Yes. But wait, one. Why one half? There is no one half here. One half is on, on the picture. No, it's a one over epsilon. So ah, one of one of epsilon. Yeah, I there see. are one of epsilon. Mm, but uh, circles, it, cycles. But, circles. Is it possible that all controlled set has a common aunt? In this case, uh, this action is impossible. You no, know, it's impossible because uh, uh, sets on the same level are pairwise disjoint, Nisha. Yes, uh, but, but uh, uh, imagine that all controlled uh, cats uh, choose uh, controlled sets in such a way that there is an ant uh, belonging to all sets, controlled by all cats. Then it, it's it's impossible to uh, do this uh, picture. The only way is to put on, on each level exactly one set. No, Sasha, at the very beginning, uh, in the beginning, they choose some control sets, so these invariant holds. And it's certainly it's possible. So, so they, they take ah, the arms. So, they, uh, so this will be divided into portions of epsilon. It, it is an a priori uh, choice of... Uh, Control it says such that it is it is possible to make this uh, level picture. That at the very beginning they somehow make this triangle. So uh -huh. for example, okay, okay, okay. So so uh, the next question. Uh, control it sets will change during the time. Uh, sure, or? they will change. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I see. Okay. Uh, so and now we make the following thing first we move arms and after each move uh, so the arms are moving uh using the numeration of ce so uh, ae uh, that is a priori uh a priori probability so this is uh arms movement arms moves So we move ants. So the ants are moved. And then after each move ants, cats are moved. Cats move. And here is the rule to move cats. Uh, after each ant, ants move, we consider what it uh, is there uh, a node F, a finite node in the tree, where sit epsilon nouns. We take any such node if it exists. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we, uh, we look if there is a cat below that controls such of those nouns. At least one of those arms. Uh, our invariant in ensures that there is such a cat because on the on the highest level, cats control all the arms, right? Yes. And then we take uh, the lowest cat. I mean, in, in our triangle, <laughs> that. Uh, controls at least one of the, those arms whose control at set intersects those epsilon arms. So if we take the lowest cat, for example, this, this cat, and this cat will move there. So this cat moves there. 
This is our rule. And then we will change control set. So is the rule clear, I mean, which, which cat moves? Yes. Uh, and uh, now, what do we do? Uh, this uh, cat takes all those epsilon ones under its control. It moves here and takes all those cats under its control. And then uh, what do we know? Uh, that in the in this level, in the level one above, all those control sets do not intersect this. And we... Mm, <laughs> Uh, we exchange the level, so we uh, so that gets now okay. controls and you said, right? this one say <laughs> and they uh, something is uh... it is unclear uh, you you are going to control all these um, ants um, in the set f by one cat is it a goal Yes, all epsilon ones are controlled. Uh, and but you should you choose. Uh, yeah, and you should choose. Uh, you, you are going to keep the invariant, and you should choose some cat sitting um, below uh, all the ones. And you argue that there is some cat, and uh, cat uh, is moved uh, to F. Mm. And then you you are going to change control itself, but I don't understand. Uh, I I, I haven't way. yet done this. First of all, we keep our uh, invariant number one mm -hmm. because this cat sits in, in the yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I, 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 I see yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now we will we will rearrange the levels uh, using the point that this um, uh, green set doesn't intersect uh, we need to know that this and this doesn't intersect ah uh, right if you this draw... these are disjoint right misha yeah uh, because otherwise... on the same level but you you wrote on on the different levels no wait uh, so this cat Let's move it here. So, Misha, this cat has changed its uh, control set to green one, right? Okay. So, this cat uh, becomes this. Okay. Uh, now, we know that this green set doesn't intersect this one. And why is this? Otherwise, we have chosen, we would have chosen this cat to move, right? Because the rule is that we move the lowest cat in the triangle to F. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? But to keep the first invariant, we should uh, uh, choose a cat such that all... Mm, no, not such... Uh... Misha, uh -huh. we, we, choose, we, we choose the cat which controls at least one ant. And I see, we... but it, it, it controls some other ants. Oh, okay. And if Doesn't you matter. if you move in uh, upward, uh, he can uh, broke the first invariant. Right, but 
to this end, we change the control set. Aha, 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 aha. So this, uh, uh, this set, this was the control set by its count. Now it's become and the green set. new control set is just uh, on sitting in F. Right. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Then we know that this green set is disjoint with this one. Yes, yes, uh, exactly. Yeah, agree. Uh, and then we just exchange the levels. This will become the second level, and this will become the first level. Ah. Uh -huh. So in general, we make the exchange of levels for all the cats of this level, except that one, we exchange it to one cat from the previous level. Mm -hmm. And so we keep our invariant mm -hmm. uh, that the cats of the same same level controls pairwise disjoint sets of ones. Okay. So this doesn't intersect, and then we exchange cats. That's the rule. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, whatever number of uh, cats we have here, for example, they are exchanged their position. And that, that cat of that level remains uh, its level. It, it's, it doesn't change. So again, we, we have the same number of cats on the previous level, and they are control pairwise uh, disjoint sets, and the same uh, number of cats on the previous level. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is not it, uh, unfortunately, because we, um, after this move, uh, these epsilon ends are under control of a cat. But because, because we have moved that cat, it's, that move can create other epsilon uncontrolled ends. But the point is that are, they are below F. And so we can do repeat this thing finitely many times until it happens that every portion of epsilon ones is uh, for every node where is epsilon, an epsilon portion of ones, there is a cat sitting in that node. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so after we do item two, we have. Uh, uh, we achieve the winning property for cats. So for every node where are epsilon ones, there is a cat. Mm -hmm. And so it, that property holds in the limit because after each cat's move, this property holds. So if there is a node uh, uh, so that starting from some uh, time there are epsilon ones there, then there is a cat sitting there starting from the very same moment. Mm -hmm. uh, this is how uh, the constant two is proven. Because in that triangle, we have uh, approximately one over epsilon squared cats. Okay, and it is unclear how to use a linear number of. No, it's unclear. So now, now the the problem is to improve the constant two for mm -hmm. finite sets <laughs> to reduce it to one and half. Say. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Okay. Will you stop now? Yeah, I think it's time to finish the talk. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Very also. interesting story about cats and dogs. Uh, the names are rather arbitrary, but 
Now is the list. Okay. Okay. Bye. To Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.